The pressure hull of the Apollo lunar module was just 0.3 millimeters thick, about the thickness of two sheets of printer paper, Armstrong later admitted, when he was walking on the moon. His biggest fear wasn't aliens, and it wasn't even micrometeorites. It was that if he leaned the wrong way, his elbow might literally punch through the wall. It sounds absurd, but NASA wasn't joking. In the training manual, it was written clearly. Do not make sudden or forceful motions inside the cabin. Outside was minus 170 C of pure, silent, airless death. This spacecraft was so thin you could dent it with your hand, and yet this fragile metal bubble. Carry $2.5 billion worth of hardware and two human lives into a place no human had ever stood before. On July 20th, 1969, 600 million people watched to see if this aluminum foil box could actually bring its crew home alive. What they didn't know is that this wasn't foolish courage. This was the absolute cutting edge of human engineering. NASA didn't make the walls thin because they wanted to. They made them thin because physics forced them to. Every extra millimeter of metal meant 50 kilograms more fuel. 50 kilograms more fuel meant a larger rocket. A larger rocket meant exponentially more fuel. It was an infinite loop, so engineers accepted the insane. The moon lander would be built at the theoretical limit of thinness, and inside, astronauts could literally hear tiny micrometeorites pinging the outside hull like fingernails tapping a soda can. And then came the 30 seconds of fuel. Their calculations said 26 seconds was the minimum burn to reach lunar orbit. NASA allowed only 4 seconds more, no extra margin, nothing wasted. Because every kilogram of extra fuel meant one less kilogram of moon rock coming home. Armstrong wrote that when he fired the engine, he counted silently in his head, one, two, three, four. With every number he counted, the odds of survival sank a little further. At 26 seconds, he thought, if the engine stops now, we never return. At 30 seconds, the engine shut down, exactly on schedule. Their trajectory error, less than 0.2 degrees. That wasn't luck, that was mastery inside this tinfoil machine was a computer weaker than a modern smartwatch yet it guided humanity 384000 kilometers into deep space and helped armstrong avoid landing in a boulder field that would have killed them instantly the ascent stage was even more extreme no seats no toilet almost no windows they stood strapped like climbers in a metal bucket wrapped in gold foil nasa joked that if this machine were sold in a toy store, nobody would buy it. And yet, this absurd, handmade-looking spacecraft performed one of the most precise orbital dockings in history. When they sealed the hatch before liftoff, even a single grain of lunar dust could have meant death, one microscopic flaw in that seal. And the entire cabin would explosively decompress, but the seal held, the engine lit, and three seconds later, they left the moon, that descent platform remains there today. Humanity's first permanent structure on another world. The moon still holds their footprints. It still holds their instruments. It still holds those sealed bags of human waste. Containing billions of Earth bacteria, now frozen and irradiated in lunar vacuum. Most should be dead, but we cannot guarantee all of them are. Tardigrades on Earth can survive vacuum for 10 days. Some microbes can hibernate for decades. Inside those bags, there may be one organism still waiting. We might have unintentionally created the first extraterrestrial extremophile experiment in history. And through all of this, one thing becomes clear. Humans are fragile. We survive space. Because of membranes, precision, math balanced on razor-thin margins. But that fragility is exactly why this achievement matters. Greatness is never born from invincibility. Greatness comes from stepping forward knowing you can be shattered. And going anyway, Apollo 11 was not a victory of power. It was a victory of vulnerability against the infinite on the moon today that Golden Lander still stands, silent, lonely, untouched by wind or rain, surrounded by footprints, tools. A forgotten flag bleached bone white by ultraviolet light and a few sealed bags containing the DNA of our home planet. Together they form a single painting. The moment humanity stepped out of its cradle onto another world, protected by walls, as thin as two sheets of paper, it makes you realize just what you have back there on Earth.
what I keep imagining is if I'm a lonely traveler from another planet. What I'd land on the blue or the brown part of the Earth. 